I'd like to start by saying hi to Mel in the UK. Hi Mel, if you're watching. Mel has been a, a supporter of the channel for uh, a long time. A few weeks ago, I did a video reviewing a book called Elvis Day by Day 2023. And in the comments, Mel was complaining that all these book reviews I've been doing are costing him a lot of money. Well, Mel, you and your wallet can both relax today because I'm going to be reviewing a book that I believe you already own. That is Elvis on Record, Volume 1, 1956 to 1965 by Paul Olner. It's all about English or British Elvis record releases during this period here. Although, in fact, as I'll try and explain uh, shortly, it actually goes up to 1970. The standard bearer for British record releases had always been this one here, Elvis UK, published back in 1987. This book, great as it was at the time, it did have its limitations in that, mainly in that the photographs were all black and white, and there are not that many photographs. The authors attempted to describe all the different uh, label and cover variations, and they did a good job of that, to be honest. There are a lot of variations in this book, but uh, not so many photographs and all in black and white. So the question for me then about this book is, uh, is it just Elvis UK, but with lots of color pictures? We're going to try and find out by putting this book through its paces. Okay, I've removed the dust jacket because I don't want to rip it. Try my best to go through this with you. It's a limited edition of only 175 copies, by the way. We've got an index here at the front, which is actually very important, as I'll explain shortly. And what Paul's done in this book is he's included a lot of advertisements and magazine covers and sheet music covers from the period. And this is a particularly interesting one for me right at the beginning of the book. It's an advert for the first 7-inch released in the UK in 1952. And it shows that back then, the original UK singles um, came with these large center holes, just like uh, American ones. And he's included this because it's the His Master's Voice label uh, on which Elvis's records were released for the first two years. In fact, there was a period there back in 57, 58, when Elvis's records were being released on two different labels, HMV and um, RCA in the UK. He starts with some interesting information about the uh, numbering system that they used for the HMV records, the Stampert numbering system, the ingenious system that they had there. And uh, it's always a good idea to read the introduction of these discographers because you get most out and you get the most out of them that way. He's also included the tax codes that were on the labels and uh, sometimes in the runout areas as well. All this information is very useful for, well, it's essential for dating the records that you have. Then, still at the beginning of the book here, he goes into the different basic label designs. These are the first RCA singles with this uh, tri-center, and there are basically three different label designs. It's all to do with the size of the logo, which Paul explains in detail here uh, and when it happened. Then you get onto the uh, the round center labels, slight differences here, which he explains again. And over here, we've got the RCA Victor labels. These are of particular interest to me, as I'll explain uh, later. And then he does the same for the albums as well. Then we move on to information about the um, Decca pressing plant, which uh, was used to press Elvis's RCA records. He goes into all the details here about the um, stampers again and all the information that you get in the runout areas. He even explains the uh, letter coding system that they use for the cutting engineers. So each engineer was represented by a letter in the runout groove. I bet all these guys are dead now. Also, at the beginning here, you get all the different sleeve designs that came with UK singles. We didn't get a picture sleeve in the UK until 1969. So until that point, each record came in its own company sleeve. These are all the different designs that were used. The 
These are a couple of examples of sheet music covers that uh, I mentioned earlier. And then we get into the real meat of the book, the first ever release of an Elvis re record in the UK. It was Heartbreak Hotel and that was the one. On the first page there you can see some labels used for demo records. You might know them as uh, promos, but in the UK they're called uh, demos. And then, look at that. These are all different label variations of the first single released in the UK. I don't even own one copy of that record. Underneath each picture you can find the release date. In the case of all these variations they all came out in 1956 and you'll also find a brief description of each one so you can differentiate one from another without having to strain your eyes. And then it goes on to the 78s. And we go through release by release. It is different from most discographies in that rather than splitting the book up into singles, EPs and LPs, it goes in chronological order according to release. So we've got Hound Dog here in late 1956 and then we've got the Rock and Roll album, the first LP in uh, October 1956. And it shows you again all the different label variations, which is really quite a lot. Surprisingly how many there were. Surprisingly? Surprising how many there were. And then we're back into the singles with uh, Blue Moon and uh, I Don't Care If The Sun Don't Shine. And it's not just labels, you also get all the cover design variations as well. The front covers tended to be the same over the years. And uh, another good thing about the book is you get nice big pictures of the front covers. Here we have all the different back cover variations for the Peace in the Valley EP. And again, you get um, release dates and uh, also concise descriptions of how each one differs from the other. Let's take a look at an LP. GI Blues here, which was a huge success in the UK, 22 weeks at number one. The mono cover design over there, which apparently didn't change. And then you've got uh, half a dozen, seven different mono back cover variations. Before moving on to the stereo version, again, the front cover seems to have stayed the same. And then you've got a half a dozen back cover variations. Before we move on to uh, some reviews here, I'm going to come back to a couple of these reviews because they're quite interesting. And then we've got all the different label uh, designs for this LP. Going right through to the last black labels in 1968. And then um, look at all these orange labels that came out at the end of the, uh, of the decade. If I can get the page turned over. It's like that old Shakespeare quote, isn't it? About getting old and having uh, dry hands and moist eyes. There you go. Uh, all the different orange label variations from 1969 through 1970. So Paul has decided to stop uh, the book at 1970 as far as variations go, um, although the new releases only go up to the end of 1965. His... Another thing I like about the book is he's indicated the rarer releases using a red asterisk. Uh, so we're looking at the Are You Lonesome Tonight page now. And these RCA Victor pressings from 1965 and 1966 and 67, all of them have a, an asterisk beside them. So if you've got any of those, you've got a rare record. I want to have a look at some of these reviews now, just to read you some of these reviews, because they're really quite interesting. So if you go back to 1960, GI Blues, new Presley LP from GI Film Review. This is the front of disc music publication. I guess it was some sort of like a newspaper type thing. And uh, it's, it's got quotes from Steve Scholes. It reads at the bottom, Scholes also said that the ban placed on Presley's recordings by some American radio stations had been lifted. He put this down to the great improvement in his singing. I thought that was an interesting quote. I don't think Elvis was ever banned for poor singing. He's banned for lots of other things, but not poor singing. And let's go right to the back of the book. The last release is uh, Harem Holiday, as it was known in the UK. 
And uh, we've got a couple of reviews up here. I'm going to look at this one here. It's Good LP Film from L. And there's a couple of things in this short review that I think reveal that the person reviewing the record didn't actually listen to it at all. I'll just read it. I'll read from the end of it. It says, 11 pleasant tracks with plenty of oriental atmosphere and enough originality to please most Presley fans. Okay, but listen to the next bit. Standout tracks are Shake That Tambourine and Mirago. So what the hell is Mirago? Well, if you're in the UK, or if you're a serious uh, Elvis UK record collector, you'll know that there was a problem with the back cover on many copies of uh, Harem Holiday. And uh, side one, track four, was listed as a Mirago, with an O at the end instead of an E. So uh, I reckon this, the person who reviewed this just chose a couple of random tracks from the back cover and said that they were the best ones. And then listen to this at the end of the review. Uh, the reviewer says, the general standard is better than most of his film albums. I know some of you like this album, but I don't think many of you will agree with that statement. And just one of the review I'd like to read that you may not entirely agree with. It's about uh, a single. Elvis great, but the song is substandard. Um, it says, Elvis is still the best of the beat singers, and he's in good form on this disc, but I'm afraid the song itself is substandard. Talking about Devil in Disguise. And uh, about the B-side, the writer writes, you can take my word for it that party givers will be spinning the B-side more often than the top side. Doubt it very much. All right, now we're going to put the book through its paces, as it were. I've chosen five singles from my collection. They're all later pressings, in other words, repressings. So these are actually quite difficult to find compared to the originals. And I've had a look through both books, the original one from 87 and Paul's new book to find out um, if these variants are in one or both of the books. And I've also totted up how many variations there are for each release to see which one has the most. So let's get on with it. Then the first one is Party and Got A Lot of Living To Do, which is RCA 1020. This one I found in both books. Uh, according to the, the second book, Paul, Paul's book, it's, uh, it's quite a rare one in that it has uh, a misspelling of the Jordanaire's name with two O's in it, Jordan Ayres. So that was in both books. However, the total number of variations for that single in the Elvis UK book was uh, only seven, whereas there are 12 variations in uh, Paul's book. So that's quite a, uh, an improvement. Uh, the next one I've got is RCA 1088, All Shook Up and The Heartbreak Hotel. This one I could not find in Elvis UK, uh, although I did find it in Paul's book. There are... 20 versions of this single in the original Elvis UK book, but there are 23 in the new book. Next, we have RCA 1113, A Fool Such As I, I Need Your Love Tonight. This one I also could not find in the original book from 1987. It is in the new book. Um, there are not so many differences here. In the old book, there are 14 variations of that single. And in the new one, there are 15. So this one must be the, uh, the difference between the two. And then we have A Mess of Blues, originally from 1960. I think this is from 63. I'll see a 1194. This one I found in both books. Uh, there are 13 variations in the Elvis UK book and uh, 14 in the new book. So slight improvement there. And uh, last but not least, I've got this 1966 pressing of Wooden Heart. This one I also found in um, both books. Yeah. There are uh, 19 variations of this single in Elvis UK, but there are 28 in the new book. So you can see that there's some improvement, uh, or there are more versions of each single in the new book compared to the uh, old one. So what have I learned in the brief time that I've been able to spend with this book? Well, first, I've learned how to more accurately date the records in my Elvis collection. I found a lot more information on how to do that in this book than I did in the Elvis uh, UK book. And uh, I've also learned just how many variations there are out there. There's a lot more in this book than in the original book. And uh, one other thing is just reinforce my belief that uh, an Elvis researcher's work is never done. I'm sure that uh, somewhere along the line, someone somewhere will find something that's not in here, but that's just the nature of the beast. Anyway, Paul, 
Congratulations on this book, and uh, I highly recommend it. Grab it while you can. As I say, 175 copies. It's not going to last. And um, Paul says in the flap here, as you can see, I've creased my um, my my dust jacket during the course of recording this. Paul writes, this book, along with its companion volume, will be the defining books on the subject. And uh, yeah, I doubt anyone's going to be publishing uh, another version of this in the future. So uh, grab it while you can. That's it for this video. I'm going to go and rest my arms now. But until next time, thanks a lot. Cheers.